Hello and welcome to my first true crime video. Now I will state that I'm doing this in one city, so it may not be perfect. But thank you for listening and let's begin. Today's is about Jane Topin. Jane was born on August 17th, 1854 as Honora Kelly in Boston, Massachusetts to Irish immigrants who had two other girls. Little is known about her childhood. Records do show her mother died of tuberculosis. When she was very young, her father, Peter Kelly, was a alcoholic, very abusive and eccentric. He was known as Kelly the Croc. Some reports do state that he stitched his own eyes closed. I couldn't find exact evidence that he did, but many reports do state this. Only a few years after her mother's death, her and her older sister Delilah were given to the Boston Female Asylum, which was basically a female orphanage. The asylum was famous for being fully ran by women, which was a great thing. But unfortunately, neither of the girls ended up in a good place. Their older sister had already been put into a real mental institution and Delilah became, after she got out of the orphanage, became a sex worker. Two years after entering the orphanage herself, Noria was given to a family and a woman by the name of Miss Ann Topin of Lowell, Massachusetts as an indentured servant. So she had to work off her payment. Now the family treated her pretty well from all the reports I could see. They didn't formally adopt her, but they were always nice. They did, though, lead to some of her problems as they did lie about her, where she came from. Um, they said she came from Irish immigrants or Italian immigrants instead of the Irish immigrants she actually came from. Uh, excuse my mistakes. Like I said, I'm shooting this in one segment. Jane did well in school and was known at, to have many friends, but she did gain quite a bit of weight. Not that that's a problem, as you can tell with me. But as she grew, she started to lie a lot about who she was, the type of things. One of her, for her biggest lies was she would tell people that she knew the Tsar of Russia. At 18, she graduated from Lowell High School and was freed from her indentured servitude and given $50, which would be about $1,141 today. She chose to stay on with Miss Topin and once Miss Topin did pass away, Elizabeth Topin was willing to have Jane stay on because they'd become friends. But Elizabeth married Ormel Brigham and no one really knows for sure what happened at that point, but Elizabeth and her Noria became estranged. And so Honoria moved, she had taken on, but she kept the name Jane Topin that she had taken on at this point. She went and attended Cambridge's Hospital of Nursing Program. She was 33 years old at this time. And quite quickly received the name Jolly Jane because she was always very happy and outgoing. But again, the gossip got to the point that people just didn't like being around her. She also drunk a lot from what the reports said and was known to use vulgar language, which at that time period, women were not supposed to do. The administrators also of the thing became a little worried about her because she had an overly enjoyment, overly excitable and enjoyment of autopsies. She loved to perform them, loved to see what the medication did in their systems. And in the same way, unbeknownst to the administrators, she had already started experimenting on her elderly guests. In 1887, a patient who would not come forward for years until Jane had been arrested 
Kate had an experience where Jane gave her medication, climbed on top of her, and started kissing her. The woman believed it was just a dream, but years later when everything came out, she realized mm, maybe it hadn't been. Jane moved on to Massachusetts General Hospital shortly after that incident, and she was quickly fired because she had been very loose-handed with opiates. But the hospital did like her, and so they decided, even though we're firing you, we're going to give your name out to some of our wealthier private clients, and you can work for them. Well, that turned out very badly. Jane enjoyed her life for it. She got paid $25 an hour, or a week, sorry, a week, which it equals about $682 a week now, which was a lot higher, about five times higher than what women of that time were getting. Yet the thing that brought Jane the most joy was murder. At that point, she had found that she loved to kill. She even was stated to say that it gave her a sexual thrill which is something that's usually only related to men killing. So it was a very interesting thing. In 1889, she was referred by Cambridge University to care for a 70-year-old Mary McCleary. Jane poisoned her, killed her, and a month later killed again. This time was one of Jane's own friends who was a lot younger. But she killed that friend because she wanted to go to St. John's Theological School and become a dining hall matron. She did get the job after killing this woman, but she didn't keep it any significant amount of time because she started stealing money from them. Jane's next victim was someone from her past, Miss Elizabeth Topin. She had, they had rekindled their friendship and they went on a picnic to the beach. Well, Jane poisoned her with strychnine, which would cause her to have seizures and lock up for hours. Usually they say it takes, strychnine poisoning takes two to three hours to kill someone. And it's a very painful death. And Jane held Elizabeth this entire time. One of the reasons she had decided to kill Elizabeth was that she wanted to marry Orgel, Ormel. Elizabeth now has wet, blah, 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 sorry about that, now widowed husband to get herself into the hill, house because he wasn't letting her in the house because she didn't work for him. She killed Brigham's 77-year-old housekeeper. He allowed her to work with him for a little while in the house as his housekeeper until he found someone else. He told her that he wa didn't want her as his housekeeper for long. There was just too much history and that he didn't want her for his wife. She got very angry and poisoned him, but not enough to kill him. She poisoned him so she could help him get better, thinking that this would make him fall in love with her. When it didn't, he fired her and kicked her out, and she tried to commit suicide. She continued working in other nursing practices, but by 1901, a state detective had started following Jane because he believed she had killed an entire family, which she had. It was the Davis family. They, she didn't want to pay rent, so she killed them and their daughter and one other child. And their daughter was an adult who had been married but was living with them. And her family had her exhumed. And when they did, they found high levels of morphine and atrophine. Police arrested Jane on October 29, 1901. When asked by her lawyer if she had killed the Davis's family, she said, yes. And I remember killing around 27 other people. But it could be a lot more. I just don't remember. She stated her first killing was at 16 when a boy dumped her. She said that if she had been a married woman with a family, she wouldn't have had to kill anyone. She was found not guilty on the charges of insanity. And she spent the rest of her life in Tantum State Hospital. Attendants remember her 
remembered her for many years because she would say, "Hey, if you brought me if you bring me morphine, I'll help you see how cool it is to kill someone." Not those exact words, of course. She but she would be very excited and wanting to give her morphine so she could help kill people. On August 17th, 1938, she died at the age of 83 in the mental institution. Now for my opinions on this case. Of course, we know she was guilty. It isn't so much that. It's more, was she insane or not? And I do have to say, in her case, I do believe it was a case of insanity. But also, I think it was a lot to do with the insanity brought on by her past. Having an abusive father doesn't always lead there, but when you add up everything she went through, <coughs> excuse me, and the issues she had, in some ways it led to her insanity. It doesn't excuse her insanity, but it does make you kind of understand that she went completely bonkers. Now, I do want to thank you for watching my first serial killer. Sunday. I do I am a strong believer that we can learn in watching what other people have done in these murders and things to see what happens in the human mind and how people relate something so small to something so big such as I want this so I'm going to take it, which is this case. Now, next week, I'm going to be talking about two different women who are mass murderers, which is another thing you don't usually hear about. Now, these women, one you can, the first one I'll be talking about, which is Alex Popova, or Popova. I apologize to anybody Russian who's listening. I'm not Russian, so I don't speak it well. Was known for killing over 300 people. And her killings, you can kind of understand. You'll see what I mean next week. But the other one was known for killing 300 children. So tune in next Sunday to hear that video. Hopefully it will be better than this one. Have a great day.